Yeah, oh, thanks to the Post, I learned about it. And, sure. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's true, with, I, I would assume, you know, if not all, most of my colleagues. Um, you know, it's a complicated issue, um, opioids, and it requires a comprehensive response, obviously, and that's why the Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Act last year was landmark legislation, as you said, because it covers the, the whole gamut. Um, some of the legislation actually got weakened uh, in a conference with the House mm -hmm. on the prescription drug area, uh, which is why we've reintroduced legislation that's actually a little stronger than our original push that got knocked out in the House on prescription drug monitoring. And uh, Maggie is a co-sponsor of that bill. Uh, Amy Klobuchar and I are the co-authors. Um, I think on this particular one, um, I mean, I frankly, you know, asked my office, did we hear from anybody? And the right. answer was no. And the irony is that it actually passed the Judiciary Committee. I'm not on the Judiciary Committee, but it went through the Judiciary Committee uh, at the same time as the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act. So I think a lot of the focus was probably on the opioid crisis and the prevention, education, treatment, recovery, and Narcan, uh, which is the miracle drug that reverses the effects of overdoses. That focus was on the Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Act, and that may have been you know, one of the reasons this sort of slipped through, because apparently it was unanimous consent in committee, unanimous consent on the floor. Um, but obviously that's one of the issues that we need to now relook at. We need to go right. back and examine that. I did look this morning at what the DEA enforcement actions were around that time, and they were significantly reduced before the legislation was passed. So mm -hmm. there was actually already um, a pullback of that, of the enforcement actions. But, you know, it's a, again, it's, it's a very complicated issue. There's no silver bullet. There's no one way to address this issue that will solve the crisis because it is a crisis. We right. just got to meet the family coming out who we saw briefly uh, uh, here and Maggie and I have, I mean, I've met with probably, you know, a thousand addicts, recovering addicts in the last couple of years alone. I focus a lot on that issue, but right. everybody has. Um, so I, I think you have to start with the drug companies coming up with a non-addictive pain medication. Uh, there was a task force recently established under CARA, the Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Act by the administration. In fact, um, applications are being accepted now for people to be on that task force. We need to push the drug companies to come up with non-addictive alternatives. I mean, it's crazy that we're using opioids for things like extracting a wisdom tooth. Sure. It just it doesn't make any sense. And then the distribution network, which is the focus of that story, is obviously a huge part of it. The Prescription Drug Monitoring Act uh, that, again, I encourage members to co-sponsor and let's get the darn thing passed, requires states to have a prescription drug monitoring program that holds the pharmacies and the doctors mm -hmm. responsible on the prescription side to stop the overprescribing. It also requires states to get involved with the interstate compacts so that you have interoperability. In Ohio, yep. people get the prescription in Ohio, then they go to West Virginia or Kentucky or Michigan or Indiana or Kentucky somewhere else to get another prescription filled. We've got to stop that. And then obviously on the treatment and recovery side, Narcan and the enforcement side. And yep. uh, we have another bill, Maggie and I, and again, it's a bipartisan bill that deals with how do you keep the illegal drugs from right. coming in. And I, I